الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. So tonight, inshallah ta'ala, will be the first, uh, what we hope will be a regular series of talks, tafsir, commentary, light commentary for parents, and children, families, which we'll do every Friday in conjunction with our uh, hybrid tahbi program. And it just made sense to me that we would begin with Al-Basbala and Al-Fatiha, which is where uh, our youngsters are beginning. And it makes sense also to begin there because this is the greatest surah in the Quran. So Al-Basbala is basically uh, a nickname for the words Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And if you open the Mus'haf and you begin to turn its pages, then you will see that the beginning of every surah, you have these words. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. At the beginning of every surah, you have these words. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In fact, these words head every surah in the Quran except one surah. So pay attention to me, my young friends. This expression, these words are like a preface for every surah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Every surah you look in the Quran, the first words at the head of it, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and we call it, like I said, the nickname is Al Basmala, except one surah. Anybody know what that surah is? Tawbah. Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah, or Al Bara'ah. Right? Two names for that surah Surah Al Bara'ah or Surah Al Tawbah. It's the only surah that doesn't begin with Al Basmala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. But Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim does appear in a surah. It does appear in a surah to make up for the basmala that's missing from al baraah There's actually a verse in the Quran where al basmala is part of the verse. That verse is surah, uh, it comes from surah An-Naml, 27th surah. It's the 30th verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ مِنْ سُلَيْمَانِ وَإِنَّهُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ This letter, it's from Sulaiman. And it opens, Bismillah اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ The name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. طيب. So now, this Basmala, which every time we open the Mus'haf, or we look at the Surah, we say, Bismillah اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ At the head of it, the scholars of Islam say, it is not an ayah from the surahs, except surah an naml but it is what we call an ayah mustaqillah. It is an independent ayah that's been placed there to serve a purpose. So when I go to surah al-Baqarah, it says surah al-Baqarah, then it says bismillah rahman rahim then it says alif lam mim. This bismillah rahman rahim is it part of the surah? Is it part of the surah? Is it part of the surah? No. It's not part of the surah. It's ayah mustaqillah. It's an ayah which is independent and it's there to serve a purpose. Anybody know what that purpose is? You know why Allah begins every surah of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Tafadha shayt. Ahsan. It basically demarks the beginning and end of the surah. And there's actually a statement of Sayyidina Jubair who was a pupil of Ibn Abbas who was one of the most knowledgeable people when it came to the Qur'an. Sayyid bin Jubir, he said that the way that the Prophet and his companions knew that a surah had ended and another surah was about to begin, Allah would reveal, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So I want you guys to remember, especially my young friends, that Basmala is an independent ayah. Allah gave it to us for a purpose. And what's that purpose? To separate, huh? Separate one surah from another. Surah, okay? There's this big debate 
about whether or not Al-Basmala is an ayah from Surah Al-Fatiha. And when you look at most Masahif, the Mus'haf that we use, the Mus'haf you guys were using upstairs for your tahfib, they have it as an ayah. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and there's a one next to it. Right? But in reality, it appears that it's not an ayah from the Quran. And it's a big debate amongst the scholars. We're not going to have this big debate. But one of the indications that it's not an ayah is that when the Prophet would lead his companions in prayer, and he would recite a fatiha, he wouldn't recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He would begin Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. What you think? If it's an ayah, can the Prophet say one ayah silently and another one out loud? Can he do that? Would he do that? No. So if it was an ayah, he would say it out loud. That's an indication. And it's not an ayah from Surah Al Fatiha, although some scholars say that it is. Big debate. All right. So I think we covered that pretty good. Let's talk about the meaning. Let's talk about the meaning of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So in English, we typically translate it as Bismillah in the name of Allah, ar-Rahman, the most merciful, ar-Rahim, the bestower of mercies. So Bismillah, I don't want to get into complicated Arabic, but what I want to say is that the word ism, literally in Arabic, name is linked bil ibafa it's linked with allah which is a proper noun in arabic if you have a singular noun linked to a proper <coughs> noun it indicates that what the what is being spoken about is general and all inclusive don't want to make it too complicated but what that means is that when god says when allah says bismillah because of the way it's worded in Arabic, it actually means in every name of Allah. That I am evoking, I am using, I am applying every name of Allah. Not just the name, Allah. Because of the structure in Arabic, that's the meaning. So in every name of Allah. In every name of Allah. That's the meaning of Bismillah, actually. Now, I want you to think about this. It says, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. Is it a complete thought? Is it a complete thought? Suppose I said to you, if I said, in this way, is that a complete thought? You guys seem uncertain. I'm talking to you. We're just having a conversation. No. And I say, man, in this way. Are you like waiting for the rest of it? Or are you like, yeah, that was a complete thought. In this way, yeah. Is that a complete thought? No. Like, suppose I said, with this pen, dot, dot, dot. Is it a complete thought? No. Like, suppose I said, in your honor, <coughs> dot, dot, dot. Complete thought? No, no. So, in all those cases, you're waiting for the punchline. You're waiting for the completion of, like, okay, in this way, what? With this pin, what? In your honor, what? This is what you're waiting for something to fill that in, right? You're waiting for me to say, for example, in this way, I go. With this pin, I, right? In your honor, I dedicate this structure. Something like that, right? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, there's something there. It's not mentioned, but it is implied. So when we start, we open the mushaf, and we always begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What is the complete thought? In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, I, huh, I begin, I read, right? I remember Allah, the context dictates it. So since we're reading the Quran in the name of Allah, I begin the reading. In the name of Allah, 
I recite. Why is this important? Oh lad, especially my young friend. Why is this important? That every time we touch the Mus'haf, we begin Bismillah rahman rahim We don't forget to say a Bismillah. Why is that important? Huh? Ahsan, one thing, it, it basically calibrates our intention and it reminds us who we should be reading for. Is it possible that you could read to impress other people? Is that possible? Yes. That can happen, can it? But if we read to impress other people, will we get a reward from Allah? No. So one of the reasons we start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is to make sure that we calibrate our what? Our intentions. I'm doing it for Allah, I'm not doing it for the, for the people. That's very good. What's another reason why we would say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Start, start pondering. Huh? Start pondering on the names of, uh, of the word. word. Ahsan. Another reason is it, it brings to mind that you reflect upon the names of Allah. That's a good one. What about my young husband? So that it won't be void of Allah's blessing. Ahsan. Another reason is that when you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you're doing what? You're, you're invoking. You're, 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 you're basically asking for requesting and you're certain to receive Allah's blessings. Jazakallah khairan. Yes. That's another reason why we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when we open the Qur'an. Like another reason, is there someone who would like us not to read? Is there someone who would like us when we read to read wrong, to say the wrong thing? Shaitan. What is the best bat that you can use to hit shaitan with? Huh? Even better than that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And then al-Istiada is definitely a good bat. But even better than that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Protect your qiraah from being what? From being sabotaged by the shaitan. So my young friends, let's, let's do this together. Let's, let's remind ourselves of what we just learned. There's a reason why we say this. We don't say it just as a, an empty ritual. There's a reason why we say it. What's one of the reasons? So with a B. B, B L, B, L, B. Huh? I got to hear from my young friend. What are we trying to get from Allah? Blessings. Like what's another thing that we're trying to get from Allah when we say Bismillah? I'm sorry, we're trying to get from Bismillah Rahman Rahim? Protection. Huh? We're trying to run somebody away. Who are we trying to run away? Shaitan. Huh? Who? Shaitan. Shaitan. We don't want Shaitan sabotaging our Qur'an. Like one last thing, we said that sometimes we might read for the wrong reasons. We might read for the people. And if we read for the people, we get a reward? No. Do we, who, do, who do we want to read for? So we say, Bismillah. I'm doing it for, for Allah. We calibrate our intentions. Mumtaz. Tayyip. Then Allah, He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I want my young listen. I want my young friends Listen to that. Listen to the ring in your ears. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. What do you notice about it? Tell me what you notice. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. What do you notice about them? Huh? Of course, they're names of Allah. Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus, Al-Salam. All of these are names of Allah. But I'm going to put, let's put these names together. Ar-Rahman al-Malik. Ar-Rahim al-Quddus. Ar-Rahman al-Rahim. They're similar. Ha! Ahsan. Similar. Come on, give me more. They both, they both indicate Allah's mercy. Okay, they all go back to Ahsan. They all go back to a root. And that root is Rahma. Mercy. They, all, they both go back to the same root. That's why you hear the same letters ringing in your ears. Allah, Rah, Ma, Ri, Ra, Ha, Mim. Rahman, Rahim, Rahman, Rahim. There's a little manipulation in the vowels, but those three letters, Ra, Ha, Mim, are what? They're there. Which means they go back to the same root. But do they mean the same thing? No. No, because when Allah changes the pattern, that changes what? The meaning. When he says Ar-Rahman, 
talking about somebody who possesses something in abundance. That and you possess it? Do you possess a little of it? Do you possess a little of it? No, you possess what? A lot of it. Whatever it is, you possess it in what? Abundance. Ar-Rahman, the one who possesses immense, unparalleled, unlimited mercy. He possesses it. He possesses it. It belongs to who? To him, it's, it, it's a characteristic. It's part of who he is. It's inseparable from him. Do I get any benefit from that? Yes. Can I benefit from it? Can I receive some of it? Will he dispense some of it to me? Yes. How do you know? Because after he said Ar Rahman, he said what? Ar Rahim. The one who does what? Who doesn't keep that mercy for himself. But he does what? He gives it. He causes it to what? To affect others. It's not something which is exclusive to him, but it is something which it transcends him and it reaches and benefits you and me. This is the meaning of what? Ar Rahim. Now, my young friends especially, give me some examples of Allah's mercy. How Allah's mercy is reaching us, how He is bestowing it on us, is being dispensed to us, delivered to us. Give me one example. Parents! Isn't that a mercy from Allah? Isn't that a mercy from Allah? Ask someone who doesn't have a parent, or doesn't have both parents, and they'll tell you how how much of a mercy it is to have parents. Very good. Who else from my young friends will give me an example of Allah's mercy? Huh? Uh, a mother taking care of her babies. You just said mother and parents, bro. Mother and parents, I want you to give me something else. Oh, think, think outside the box. Think outside the box. What did you do before you came here? Oh. What did you do before you came here? Didn't you eat, didn't you? You eat, ate your belly full, didn't you? Is that a mercy from Allah? Food? Provisions? You better believe it. Not to follow up for sound. When you um, do a bad deed, he doesn't just make something bad that happen to you right away. He gives you more chances. He gives you chances. Another good one. He gives you chances. Don't we do wrong things? Yes. Does he punish us right away? No, he gives us chances. Give me something else for my young friends. Go ahead. From Allah's mercy. He forgives. Good. Another example of Allah's mercy. Think about the practical things now. We had parents. That's a practical one. Food. We had a practical one. Okay. Breathing. What are you, what are you breathing? What, what would happen if you didn't have air? Yeah. So air is from what? Allah's mercy that He bestows on us. Without air, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to live. Right? And at huh? Children. Children. Shelter. Ah, son. Yes. Having a roof over your head. How many people like being outside in the cold? Who likes being outside in the cold? Okay, 30 degrees below. <laughs> Not too many people. Most people want to be in inside. So Jazakallah Khair Sheikh, that's 100% right shelter. Having a place to go when it's rainy outside, when it's windy outside, when it's cold outside, I have a place to go and protect myself, shield myself from the elements. I sent this shelter. So yes, that's another verse. Islam. Islam. Guidance. Yeah, we got to talk about that side of it too, the spiritual side, right? And unfortunately, we're out of time, but you guys did awesome. But I'm going to ask you next week 
about what we talked about, and you have to remember, okay? You have to remember why do we say al basmala at the beginning? Is it an ayah from the Quran? Is it is it an ayah from any surah? What's the meaning of Rahman? What's the meaning of Rahim? I'm going to ask you these things next week, okay? Everybody on board? All right. Now the only thing I have to say before we close is that we start at eight twenty, not eight twenty two. Not 823. So I need you guys to be in the musalla seated. At what time? 8 morning. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi